Hello. Uh, we learned this formula, the, um, how the variance of the sum is calculated, and the idea is you have to cons uh, take this into account. Two times the cross product, like the expansion of quadratic uh, term. And then standard deviation follows directly from this formula. And if you apply this idea to our example, our example have these numbers. So there are two assets, A and B, and both assets have the same expected uh, return. But the variance of A is 36 and the variance of B is 8. So B is safer and A is more risky. And uh, the covariance between them is negative 16. So they are moving exactly the opposite direction. Um, so now we are going to consider the portfolio, which is simply A plus B. Portfolio X equals A plus B. And its expected value is simple. The, the expected value of the sum equals the sum of expected values, which is 20. Uh, but variance is not that straightforward. Variance of the sum is sum of the variances plus 2 times cross product. And that is, so then plug in the numbers, 36, 8, 2, minus 16. Plug in the numbers, then you get 12. 12 is what we got uh, earlier. So 12 was the variance of the portfolio. So uh, cl it's clearly seen. If the, there was no covariance, then the variance of the portfolio would, would be simply the sum. However, uh, because the covariance was negative, what is negative, so the resulting variance is much smaller than the sum. If the covariance was positive, which means they are moving together, then uh, the variance would be larger than, larger than the uh, the sum of the variances, right? That's what we can learn from the variance, and. Earlier, I said the, the magnitude of covariance has no direct meaning. That is right. It itself, the covariance itself cannot be interpreted, but it is still important because it involves in the calculation of variance. When you calculate the variances, the correlation coefficient is, is useless. So it is already standardized, so it does not, it's not, it cannot be directly used to calculate the variance, but uh, when you have to use the covariance to calculate the variance and then standard deviation follows from this. So if you want to calculate the standard deviation of the sum of random variables, still you need uh, covariance, the covariance. So covariance is uh, important mathematically or statistically for this kind of formula, but uh, practically interpretation is not easy. We cannot tell how big minus 16 is without looking at the variances. So it's still, what's po the point is, the, cover the size of the covariance matters relative to the variances, their variances or their standard deviations. Okay, so uh, it is the diversi diversification. The risk is diversified uh, by the negative covariance, which means when one is not doing well, the other is going to uh, complement. So, so they are moving other, the other way, and diversification is uh, is great. It's doing really a great job in reducing the risk. Now, so far we only consider the variance, but in many examples, actual uh, applications, the standard deviation is more more common measure. So we need one more algebra, one more step to obtain the standard deviation. So let's think about the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of a and b. So when can we say the risk of the portfolio equals to the sum of two uh, assets, uh, sum of the two risk measures from both assets? For this to be true, for this to be true, we first have to transform 
standard deviation into variance by taking square square so variance of x is square of standard standard deviation a plus standard deviation b this way and expand this uh, quadratic form then you get square standard deviation of a squared which is variance and standard deviation b squared which is variance plus two times cross product by expanding the quadratic form so by the way if i were in the classroom i would write down the the equations formulas and i'm going to show you one by one which should help a lot but now i cannot do that i i tried to use the tablet but it's 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 horrible oh my writing cannot be read uh so it did not work so unfortunately there is no no clear way you know, uh, no no easy way to uh, mimic the handwriting on the board so please do it by yourself uh, put a paper pen and paper and just expand it is easy expand uh, this quadratic form and find where these guys are from right should be doable easy enough uh, and now let's compare this to the previous formula we learned variance of x the variance of the sum equals sum of variances plus two times cross product again so here if this was true that implies covariance between a and b equals this part if this equals to this then you are going to get this right so this this always holds this is always true and this is true only when this is true and so when these guys are true then this is true right uh, a little bit confusing but now I compare three equations should be uh, clear and anyhow you see the the same structure between this and this and so that means this holds this condition holds when covariance equals standard deviation times standard deviation this is when no risk diversification occurs and this happens when this is equivalent so if you divide covariance by divide covariance by two standard deviations or both standard deviations then you get correlation but from the previous condition the denominator and numerator are the same so it implies correlation equals to one so what's surprising here is so correlation equals to one is the it means that they are the same assets or just they are the same assets simply speaking perfectly correlated so even if they are they are perfectly correlated uh, that's the case when you have this so other so every case uh, other than correlation equals to one you are going to have smaller risk after uh, combining two assets so always it will be uh, inequality so standard deviation of x m will be strictly smaller than the sum of two standard deviations as long as correlation is not one and correlation is not one is very it's almost everything almost every assets um like two assets and no in the world there would be no pair of assets whose correlation equals to one so always always uh the standard deviation of x uh, must be smaller than the sum of two standard deviations so if you believe that the standard deviation is the your re measure is your measure of the risk then uh, diversification happens all the times that's first uh, observation we can derive from the formula and then what happens what happens if the correlation coefficient is minus one which is a perfectly negatively correlated assets or a perfect diversification it would be uh, it's a ideal case and in this case we go back go the other way uh, through the the formula 
So you have this correlation coefficient is minus 1. So covariance is minus standard deviation of A times standard deviation of B. Plug this into the formula. Variance of X can be written in this way, but covariance equals this guy. So replace. Then it is A squared B squared minus 2 times A and B. You know that equals a minus b squared, right? So, so that means by taking square root on both sides, you have standard deviation of x equals standard deviation of a minus standard deviation of b. This is an, another surprising result. So if, if the correlation coefficient was negative 1, you are going to get a perfect risk diversification. The, maximum risk diversification which is so investing additional investment on b only reduces the risk but fully reduce the risk right so like standard deviation of b is the risk when you invest on b but that risk is helping you to reduce your risk and uh, the, the the trade is one-on-one -on -one. so so all the risk from B is now a good thing, fully a, a kind of negative risk. It becomes a negative risk to you that, that helps uh, to diversify the risk. So this is the minimum possible, minimum possible uh, risk when you invest on two assets, equally on two assets. And uh, third example, third case we can think about is so then what happens if the covariance is zero? And in particular, we are, let's, uh, in chapter two, we learned statistical independence. And statistical independence means two random variables are independent, literally. And in that case, I did not show this, but when two random variables are independent, statistically independent, their correlation coefficient is zero. It's intuitive to understand. Of course, covariance would be zero and correlation will be also zero. So assume this case when they are independent when or when they are uncorrelated, this term goes away. The last term goes away. And then you only have this, which is smaller than this guy. So anyhow, still you are uh, you get a lower risk by investing on both assets. So what it means is even if they are not negatively correlated, so negative correlation is hard to find in reality, but it doesn't need to be negative correlation. Zero correlation still implies risk diversification. Risk is diversified uh, even when two assets are not correlated. So just they are random, two different assets. Still, investing on both will help you. Uh, okay. Uh, by the way, this is just a general theory. I'm not teaching you how to invest. So do not believe in me. I, I'm not an investor. I'm not good at investment. Uh, just, just what you have to understand from this is how the covariance and correlation uh, play in uh, in in calculating the uh, summation of two random variables. Okay, uh, I'm going to consider a more realistic um, uh, example with real data in the next slide. See you in the next video. Bye.